From 1 John 3.22, we read, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And we would remember, of course, Hebrews 13.8, which says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us not forget the Lord. Let us not forget all of his benefits. All the way back in Psalm 103, verses, uh, I think it's 2 and 3, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. I'd like to talk a little bit about healing today. And that is, this is a, a subject that's a little bit touchy for Christians. There are large groups of Christians who actually don't believe that God heals anymore. I have found nothing biblical about that. Those who say that are usually claiming some type of uh, a dispensational difference that he just doesn't do it anymore. However, every dispensation I see in the Bible is spelled out by God in the Bible. It's not a conjecture. And what I see about healing is that it will always be there. But there are certainly challenges with that. And I think we need to look a little bit more deeply uh, into some of the reasons why. I'd like to encourage anyone seeking the Lord for healing, don't give up. Hang in there. Seek the Lord because he is still in charge and he wants to do you good. One of the first things that is simple to say is that God is not a genie. We want instant results, right? Of course, we are in pain. And if we are in a great deal of pain or if we are being inhibited, God will take things away rather quickly as, he, as there is a need for it. However, uh, God is not a genie and we must not treat him in this way. He is our Heavenly Father. If we are His being saved, He's trying to deal with us in certain ways. So let's look at this a little bit more from Scripture. Because what we see is that Jesus healed everyone who came to Him. I mean, He did. If they came to Him, He healed them. That's the recording. We do see little places, such as uh, when He is visiting His hometown area, that He could not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. But in Scripture, whenever someone came to him, he healed them. He was trying to show them the power of God. He was trying to show them who he is. It did not always mean repentance, unfortunately. However, I'm going to look at a couple of examples. Uh, the first example I'd like to mention here is from uh, the book of Mark. It's chapter 8, verses 22 through 26. They brought to Jesus a blind man. And this is the, from the town of Bethsaida. This was actually Peter and Andrew's hometown. However, if you remember in Matthew eleven twenty, 20, uh, Jesus did most of his mighty works there, it said, but he was, he was rebuking them because they did not repent. So the first thing Jesus did with this blind man was he led him out of the town. That's very interesting, but he did not want them to be infected, apparently, with their unbelief for who he is. Although the towns had enough belief for his miracles, they did not accept him as God or Christ. And the next thing we see after that, of course, is, is Jesus had to heal him in two stages. When he had touched his eyes, he asked him if he saw anything. And he said, I see, he said, I see men as trees walking. Jesus had to touch him a second time. I, I can tell you for myself, there have been some healings. I've had to pray over the same area. Uh, maybe half a dozen times or so. The Lord takes it away, and eventually it stays away, uh, usually, you know, but I have to continue going, and I'm not sure why. Uh, however, we need to persist in prayer. And, of course, in the end with that, with that blind man in Bethsaida, Jesus said, do not go back into the town or tell it to any in the town. That, that was his instruction after he was healed. We also see... Uh, from the 10 lepers in Luke 17, we see that there were 10 lepers and they wanted to be healed. Now, the lepers had to stay outside of everything. Remember, they were unclean. They couldn't come in contact with anyone. And Jesus just said, go and show yourself to the priests. So this is what they had to do. They had to go to the priests and the priests would proclaim that they were clean and then they could rejoin society, so to speak. So in other words, these lepers had to go by faith. Uh, they were not healed at that, at that instant, just like this, but uh, they had to go by faith. And as they went, they were healed. And so there was an act of faith that went along with Jesus' direction. Again, something different. 
But I wanted to read this account to you. This is a, from the woman of Canaan, a Greek woman. And just listen to this account and just hear what Jesus, what Jesus was doing. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. This should fall into the same category as, as healing, because often, you know, devils will have that physical infirmity as a sign they are there. But Jesus answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto you even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Can you see the persistence that was being required here? Now we see this in a few verses, but it may take longer than that in our lives. I have heard of numerous testimonies. One person was being healed of a, of a see, it was a dislocated ankle. And the healing was prayed for and claimed, but it took four days until it showed up. Another person who was told he was healed by God, it took three months. Another person took a month. And so this is what we have to look at. You know, we never even understood why. My wife was, for a considerable period, I mean, perhaps even 10 years, she was you know, she had her ear was was like growing shut, like it was she doesn't even know why, so that she became virtually deaf in her one ear. And we had, now there was spirit, there were spiritual battles going on at this time. We didn't really, you know, associate the two together at the time. But it came around that here one day, poof, I mean, after like, like 10 years, something in her ear, this blockage fell out, and she was healed and could hear perfectly well again. Uh, unfortunately, that me meant that uh, if it was noisy at night, it might bother her before she could just turn her head, her good ear on the pillow. And uh, she, would, she wouldn't be able to hear any uh, extra noise at night. It helped her to sleep. Now, now she got a, got a little taste of what I go through. But praise the Lord. I mean, we just don't know what the Lord is up to. And I would just encourage anyone to persist. You see this with this woman. She came to him. At first, he ignores her. And then she comes up and she worships him. And then he's saying, it's not meat for me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. You're a dog. You're not an Israelite. You're one of somebody else. Jesus was testing her. And she said, yes. Yes, master, that's the truth. But the dogs will eat of the crumbs that fall from the children's table. And so you see, sometimes, you know, God really isn't a genie, is he? We have to listen to him, and he wants us to grow. Moving on to this, uh, moving on to this next thing, praying for others. Now, somewhere along the line, we'll be asked to pray for others, and we we may have to have a lot of faith. Again, I'm thinking now of another person who prayed for a girl that had a a terrible brain. It was something, some type of disease or something was eating her brain away, actually, and he prayed for her for just over a year. But then the Lord healed her and he just, you know, he healed her instantly when that happened. But he was praying for like hours. He was driving for hours to see her. So we don't know what the Lord wants to do and how. But uh, let's have faith in God and trust in him. It is for our well-being. In praying for others, sometimes you're going to run into this. You know, will the Lord heal others or won't through your prayers? I've actually had it go both ways. And the Lord has shown me that there is one key difference. Now, this includes unbelief, has been healed, and they have not been healed. Sometimes they claim to be believers, but they're not healed. It's their faith. Are they asking you to pray for them? A lot of times here, at least in Botswana, people will accept whatever you do. If you say, hey, may I pray for you? Sure, go ahead. And most people will not decline that. They will say, it's, it's foolish not to let a person pray for them. And so they will do that, but they don't really believe. They don't, they're not really praying. It's not really their idea. They're just trying to be nice to you. That's one way that it happens, and they may not be healed. 
And so if there's any uh, consolation in this, if, if it matters to you, I mean, you can absolutely pray for anyone that you feel led to. But a person, you know, if, if you suspect that they're just being nice, you might ask and say, look, I want to pray for you. But do you really want me to? Do you believe there is a God that's going to answer your prayer? Because I'd rather not, you know, continue on unless you believe that. And many people have a fundamental belief of God that he, he might hear and answer their prayer. And so he does. He shows himself and it's proof. Now, what about doctors? I'm not going to put down doctors. We need doctors and they serve a valuable function. But if we're going to take a look at, take a look at what the Bible has, the biblical examples, there are only four examples of interaction of, do with, of doctors with patients. Uh, except for like in Genesis, they include the physicians to be those that are embalming Israel after he's dead. They call them physicians. Obviously, they weren't treating him for a disease or anything. So there are only four places. I have this and other scriptures listed in the description for your perusal later. Okay. But each of those, in each of those interactions, they are negative. The doctors can't do anything. They are, you know, so the their healing attempts have failed. Now, is God telling us don't go to doctors? I think one thing he would say is don't trust the doctor. Trust God. Okay, trust the Lord to give the doctor wisdom. Something like that. It's great to know when your doctor is, is a believer. Okay, so then he is trusting in God and not just his own learning. That's kind of the way it goes. But no, doctors serve a, a, a good function. And another thing with doctors is... If you don't know what's going on and you go to a doctor, they might tell you. And so this will only glorify God if you know the healing. Say, wow, I have this pain. And if you were praying, say, oh, Lord, please heal me. This just hurts so bad. Play, take away this pain and the cause of it. And he does. And you praise God for it. You're not in pain anymore. But what happens then is you don't know what it was. If you go to a doctor, you might find out it was a cancerous tumor that was threatening your life. Now it's a real glory to God when you go to the doctor and he can't find the tumor anymore. Do you see what I mean? So there could be a reason for doctors like that. The Lord has used that with uh, Jamie and I a couple times. Uh, but we don't want to put our absolute trust in doctors. We want to put our trust in God in everything. Uh, faith in man will always bring a snare if it's left alone by itself. So we trust the Lord for his wisdom and, uh, and follow him in what he does. Something else I wanted to point out is that Luke, who uh, through God through Luke wrote, you know, the gospel of Luke, as well as the book of Acts, Luke was a physician. Okay, this was listed in Colossians 4.14. We know that Luke was a physician. There is no record of Luke treating anyone. And Luke traveled with Paul. He was part of that entourage that was on the island of Melita in Acts 28. And yet they were coming to the Lord for healing through Paul. There's no record of, of Luke treating someone for a disease. I'm not saying he didn't do it, but I think it shows us something. If uh, there was a great trust even among the doctor then for the Lord, rather than his own skilled hands. Another question might be, okay, why is there a delay? We know that there are delays. Uh, when, and that's the big thing because we want everything instantly. That's just that God is not a genie. We want, instant, we want instant results, but God has his plan for us. So he may be using chastening. And for this, rather than say punish, I'll just punish us. It's more palatable to say he's trying to show us something or he's trying to slow us down or he's trying to increase our prayers because we've been getting too busy and we need to spend more time with him. God has a reason for it. And that's why he might be delaying things. Okay. Now, I have seen over the years that there are other reasons why healing may have faded during the years. For one thing, we see from uh, the letter written to the Church of the Laodiceans in Revelation 3, I think it's 15 through 19. What is the problem with them? Okay. Why are they being spewed from, from God's mouth? It says, because they say they are rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. That means they don't need God's healing. They are so rich and increased with goods. They can rely on doctors. They just go to the doctor. So, well, why should, why should I pray for healing? I can go to the doctor. I have money to pay for it. That's a key reason why. They don't need God. 
And so they don't really trust in him. They trust in what they can see. And then finally, there's another interesting passage from Galatians 3.10. Of course, Galatians is a warning to a church that was falling back into a works-based salvation rather than faith. And in Galatians 3.10, it says, if we are under the law, we are under a curse. In other words, if we're trying to work out our own salvation, putting our faith in works, now we're getting away from the faith, the faith that would be necessary for healing. And that is a real problem I see in this last day's church. They are getting away from faith-based healing. They are falling back into works. They're doing all kinds of things that look good to the world and to other churches around them. They're trying to draw in the world to their services to increase their, their coffers. So I just say that there are reasons why these things may may have diminished over the years, but God still heals, praise his name. And I would just encourage you to go to him and to go to him and to go to him. If you really love him, trust him. He has the best for you in mind. May God bless this message uh, to your edification.